Have you ever had to make a decision where you weren't sure about the outcome? Maybe there was a random variable in there that you couldn't, you didn't know how to predict and, but you still had to make a decision without having to know that specific outcome. Businesses face that all the time. For instance, the company that we're going to look at in this simulation is going to have to decide how many cards, Valentine cards to produce, but they don't know how many cards they're going to sell. So they've got some basic probabilities here of how many they think they are going to sell. They think that there is, um, uh, they're below 10%, they think it, odds are that they're going to sell 10,000. They think that there's a 10 to 44% chance that they're going to sell 20,000. A um, 45 to 74% chance that they're going to sell 40,000. So um, 10 to 44 was 20,000. And um, 45 to 74 is 40,000, and there's a 75% chance and above, I'm sorry, um, there's a 25% chance that they would sell 60,000, so that would be 0.75 and above. Okay, so this chart's going to be important because we're going to use it in a VLOOKUP function. All right, so first we've got to do is, the first thing we've got to do is build our business model. So our number produced, we could really choose any of these variables for this initial model. It doesn't matter because we're going to run a thousand simulations on it in this Monte Carlo. So you can pick any one. I picked 40,000 and that's fine. If you picked a different one, that's fine too. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is have Excel calculate a random number. So you're just going to type in equals R, A, N, D, and then two parentheses. And Excel is going to calculate a random number. Next, we're going to um, look, use a VLOOKUP function to look up the demand based on the random number that was calculated. All right, our lookup value is going to be our random number. Our table array is this table over here. And we want it to return the value from column two. So we're going to put this in and we're going to check it and make sure it's returning the right value. All right, so our value is 4%, so it should return 10,000, which indeed it does. And we can run a couple simulations and check it. Um, to change your random variable, press or I'm sorry, to, yeah, change your random number, press F9 once. All right, 80 and above, it should be returning 60,000, which indeed it is. Okay, we had a couple of other things that were given on our problem. The first is unit production cost, which was $1.50, so it cost us $1.50 per card. The next is unit price, which is $4, so we are selling them for $4 a card. And the disposal cost, which is $0.20 cents per card. This is a cost. Sometimes when companies dispose of things, they get a little bit of profit out of it. But so be aware of whether this cost is, this is costing the company something or it's gaining them something. All right. So now we've got to make a business model, our basic business model out of this. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate our revenue. So our revenue is going to be the minimum between our produced and our demand. Why do we have to use a minimum function here? Well, if we all, if we produce 40,000, but the demand is only 20,000, we can only sell 20,000. If that were reversed and we'd produce 10,000, only produce 10,000, but the demand was 20,000, we could still only produce 10,000 or sell 10,000. That's why it's got to be the minimum. So we're going to take the minimum of that number and we're going to multiply that by the selling price, which is $4. So our revenue here is $80,000. Next, we have to calculate our costs. So that is simply the number produced multiplied by the cost to produce it. Okay, and notice that when I put in the formula and, change, and press enter, our random number's changing, which is making this first formula change, and that is totally fine. All right, our total disposal cost is a, this formula is a little bit more complicated. So remember, it's going to cost us 20 cents. So we're going to do 20 cents times. Now we've got to use an if function because we may or may not have disposal costs. So we've got to get Excel to calculate that for us. So we do if, okay, if our produced is greater than our demand, Okay, then we're going to 
multiply, or we want it to return the value of um, produced minus demand. If it's not, then we want it to return a value of zero. So what will happen here is um, the, it, we've got the unit display cost, and we're going to multiply that either by the, produ the amount produced minus demand, so that's going to give us our leftovers, or zero. And if we multiply it by zero, then, of course, this is going to come out at zero. All right, so let's hit Enter. We're going to check this formula. Anytime you do a complex formula with an if, you want to make sure that it is working correctly. All right, so our demand is 60000 and we produced 40000 so we shouldn't have any disposal costs because we're only going to sell the 40000 There won't be anything left. All right, let's press F9 and make sure it calculates correctly when those numbers... Um, uh, when we produce more than we demand, okay? Oh, there we go. Okay, so we've produced 40,000 and the demand is 20,000. So that means that we're going to have 20,000 left over uh, multiplied by 20 cents and our dis total disposal cost here of $4,000 is correct. All right, now we've got to calculate our profit. So our profit is going to just be our revenue minus our expenses. So our revenue minus total variable cost minus total disposal cost. And again, in some cases, our total disposal cost might be zero. All right. The next thing we're going to do is set up a two-way table so that we can run a thousand simulations of this thing at one time. All right. I've done a couple, a couple tricks to set up your table. I've kind of already done this, but if you type one, two, and then drag it down and select, um, get your cursor to where it's got the skinny little arrow, so go right to the right-hand corner, and then you can just drag down until you see a thousand. And I'm not going to go all, well, yeah, I'm not going to go all the way down. You, you will need to. Um, but since I've already done it, I'm not going to go all the way down. And then we're going to put in our production, our, our, the production quantities that we can choose. So we can either choose 10,000, 20,000, 40,000, or 60,000. All right, now we've got to link our profit cell right here, because that's the one that matters. And so we link it right in this, this corner. And this is critical that it looks just like this, otherwise your two-way chart or your two-way data table won't work. All right, now we're going to select the whole area. And then we're going to go over to data, what if analysis, and data table. All right, we are going to do a two-way data table. We're going to kind of fool Excel a little bit because we th these numbers don't matter. They're just counting off our simulations. But we want it to be um, a thousand simulations at each of these. So we, like I said, we, we've got to fool Excel a little bit. So the first thing is this is our amount produced. So we are going to select the cell for amount produced and that will tell Excel to vary the number in this formula. Or, or sorry, yeah, vary this number in this formula by this amount or any, it also would vary it in any cell that was affected by this formula. Okay, the second thing we've got to do is select a column input cell, but these cells aren't in our, are not in our initial model. So what we've got to do is again, we're, this is where we're fooling Excel. We're going to just select a random cell. It doesn't matter which one. The only thing that matters is that there's nothing in it and that it's not in your data table. So I selected F2. I could easily select E3, E4, you get the point, okay? Um, it, it doesn't matter, you just have to select an empty cell. And then we're going to press OK. And look here, Excel has run for us a thousand simulations based on all different random numbers. So what we're going to do now is see if we can figure out which one of these order quantities gets us the, the best shot at a, a high profit. So we're going to calculate the mean and standard deviation for each of these columns. So our, to calculate our average, we're going to do equals average and we're going to select every number in this one column of the simulation. Okay, so that's B16 through B1015. 
All right. And no surprise here, our mean is $25,000 because we have a guaranteed $25,000 profit if we make 10,000 because there's no way demand is going to be less than that. All right, so now let's calculate our standard deviation. So you're gonna do your standard deviation of a sample. And again, we've gotta go select all of these numbers. All right. Now, standard deviation is zero as it should be. Um, I'm gonna, I selected these two cells and what I'm going to do now is drag those formulas across. So we get the mean or the average and the standard deviation for each of the products. All right, so generally what you want to do is select the one with the highest mean. So that means um, this $40,000 has the highest mean. Our mean profit based on a thousand simulations is $54,000. Not too bad. Um, there are a few simulations where we use, lose money, but they don't happen frequently. And our standard uh, deviation is fairly acceptable. Now, say you have an instance, say, say 40,000 wasn't an option where you're having to choose between 20,000 and 60,000. These two numbers are fairly close. Uh, you might choose based on this particular simulation to go with 46,000 because it's a little bit higher. In this case though, I would recommend you might choose based off the standard deviation. Um, notice the standard deviation at 12,000 is a lot lower than the standard deviation at 74,000. That means that you have a much higher chance of actually hitting this number than you would have of hitting this number. So if I were looking at this, maybe I, I'm not a I'm maybe mildly risk averse. I'm certainly not highly risk averse. Um, I might choose this one because the profits are similar and it's a lot less risk. Um, but because this is an option, th this 40,000 is an option, um, this would be the one I would go with in this particular simulation. All right, so now we want to find out what is our 95% confidence interval for if, if we order $40,000, uh, sorry, 40,000, or if we manufacture 40,000 calendars. So that formula is given to you in your textbook, but to reiterate, it is D13 minus 1.96. The 1.96 is given to you. It does not change no matter which one you look at. Then you multiply that um, by D14 and divide that by the square root of a thousand. And we use a thousand because there are a thousand simulations. Okay, and so our lower end of our confidence interval is 55,000. And so now we've got to do the upper one. So again, D13, and this is now going to be plus 1.96 times D14, and then divided by the square root of 1,000. Okay, so that means that um, there is a 95% chance that we will be above $55,000 in profit and below $61,000. So again, that makes this look like a pretty good choice. We can play with F9, and as we adjust F9, it's going to adjust these numbers a little bit, but it doesn't adjust them all that much. Um, you could do the 95% confidence interval for any of these simply by switching out um these two cells, the D13 and the D14 um, appropriately. All right, again, I hope this video has been helpful. If you have any questions or if there are any, if there's anything I can help you with, please feel free to contact me and I hope you have a great day.